Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. I'm really happy that I can be here and I can introduce you the work of our working group and the work of our collaborators. So also thanks to Pavel Matejka to organizing this event. So uh, I will start uh, with the slide which is normally in the end. Uh, I will start from the opposite side. Uh, I will first say um, thanks to my working group. Uh, then I will uh, uh, introduce you what we are working on. Uh, we are dealing with gas vapor or liquid separation membranes. And um, since we are not <clears throat> polymer chemists, we um, obtain the samples, but we can play with them. Uh, we can tune them. Uh, uh, we can uh, test them uh, uh, from the experimental data. We prepare the models, and for characterization and uh, testing, we construct our own apparatuses. Uh, for that, we have a lot of funding, so I'm really thankful for this <laughs> grant agency, Ministry of Education, European Community. And um, what I want to stress now, uh, it's not the collaboration of the, over the world, but I want to stress here the collaboration internal. Uh, I want to say uh, thanks uh, to my <laughs> co-workers from our university. Um, so, uh, the topic of my presentation, so about some radical improvements. Uh, I don't know how you are familiar with membrane separation, so uh, basic idea is uh, to have uh, some barrier which can easily separate one species from the others because of the material or because of the interactions of the species. So, uh, in general, uh, we have some uh, feed mixture. Uh, due to driving force, uh, some substances can pass, or they, are, uh, they remain in the feed site, so they call retentate, and we collect per mate. Uh, from the point of view of the membrane uh, uh, architecture, we can have porous materials or non-porous materials, and gas separation membranes are mostly non-porous. So I will speak about these topics. So in this uh, field, there is some called uh, trade-off. On one side, we have the uh, permeability of the material, and on the second side is the selectivity. If we have highly permeable material, this material is non-selective, and vice versa. So for the benchmarking of, uh, of this, uh, all the membranologists over the world are using the so-called Robson plot. Uh, here we have uh, permeability of more, more permeable species. Here we have the ratio of the both uh, permeabilities. And uh, each red circle in the cloud here is one polymer or polymer membrane from the literature. And, uh, uh, and the line here uh, representing the limit, the border, uh, the upper bound, uh, where the maximum uh, performance of the membrane can be obtained. So the, uh, the dream of all the membranologists is to break this upper bound because then you can uh, publish your results more easily. So, uh, but how to, it's not easy. <laughs> so how we can tune these materials to have these nice uh, properties that can be easily publishable. So I will show you just uh, two, uh, two um, issues which we solve. Uh, due to internal collaboration in our university. So uh, we, it's necessary to have uh, uh, good performing material. So we use a highly branched polyamides from uh, Professor Sissel uh, that scores quite well. Uh, then with uh, several other groups, we use uh, additives. And this is the classical uh, way how to produce so-called mixed matrix membranes. Uh, but the problem is that this is completely random process and uh, the radical improvement which we want to uh, show to the community is that we can somehow keep a control on the process by the magnetic field. And uh, um, we started in, uh, almost three years ago uh, with the first generation of the, of the apparatus uh, that were, was able to keep the uh, uh, additive magnetic responsibilities in some specific uh, way and the first uh, results were quite challenging. There, there was no sedimentation or aggregation. So after uh, two more years, finally in December, we, uh, with Dr. Uh, Hong Wu, uh, we applied for the 
patent application. Uh, and the, because of this result, so if, if the normally magnetic field is not used, uh, all the nanoparticles are in the, uh, in the one side of the membrane. There is some sedimentation with the magnetic field. All, all the particles are uh, through the cross-section of the membrane. So that was the idea which I have in 2014. is quite working, so I hope <laughs> we will have more results on that. Uh, the second issue, I hope st <laughs> I have still time. It was uh, the next software was somewhere here. We'll be speaking uh, in the next part. So uh, we use uh, his materials. Uh, graphene is perfectly uh, or ideal to the structure. Graphene oxide, which we are using, which we are using, uh, is not so well organized, and therefore uh, this material has quite interesting properties. Um, uh, it's possible to prepare graphene oxide in very, very thin layers on the support, but uh, the interesting outcome of the project is that, that the membranes, which are self-standing from graphene oxide, will prepare uh, very thin but, uh, but stable. And with these materials, we got quite interesting results breaking the upper bond. So we are working on this field. Uh, we have some more ideas how to move really far from the upper bound uh, in future. So that's, that's all from my work, <laughs> and I'm ready for collaboration with the other people from our university, and thank you for your attention.